Hi children, how are you all? Welcome back to the last session of the chapter Shapes and Angles. Be ready with your geometry box while watching this video. Before proceeding further, let us revise what we did in the previous session. You had learned about an instrument called a divider, also known as an angle tester, which is used to see if two angles are of same size or not. You had also learned an angle having L shape is called a right angle. Angles can be classified as a right angle, bigger than a right angle and smaller than a right angle. The angle of a polygon will change if you change the shape of the polygon. But this is not true in a triangle. Shapes in Towers Do you know why triangles are used in towers and bridges? Triangles are shapes which are strong and do not change easily when pressed. In fact, you can observe in the above pictures how different shapes are made stronger by using diagonal beams which divide shapes into triangles. Can you think of some other places where triangles are used? Yes, in railway stations, bus stops, etc. Angle and time. Different angles can be seen on a clock's face when the hour and the minute hands of the clock move round as time passes through the day. Now you know what is a right angle, a smaller angle and a bigger angle. Observe the angle marked in each of the clock and find out what angle it is. The angle marked in the first clock looks bigger. So it is bigger than a right angle. The angle marked in the second clock is of L shape. So it is a right angle. The angle marked in the third clock looks smaller. So it is smaller than a right angle. Degree. Angles can be measured in degrees. Degree is written as shown here. I had classified the angles as a right angle, smaller than a right angle and bigger than a right angle. Now I am going to give you the names for the smaller than a right angle and bigger than a right angle. Smaller than a right angle is called an acute angle and bigger than a right angle is called an obtuse angle. So angles can be classified according to their measures as acute angle, right angle, obtuse angle and straight angle. Let me define each angle now. Acute angle. An acute angle is an angle that measures less than 90 degrees. Right angle. Right angle is an angle whose measure is exactly 90 degrees. Then obtuse angle. An angle whose measure is greater than 90 degrees 
and less than 180 degrees is called an obtuse angle. Lastly, straight angle. An angle whose measure is exactly 180 degrees is called a straight angle. Let us find out what angles are formed in these clocks according to their measures. In clock A, the angle formed is more than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. So, it is an obtuse angle. In clock B, again the angle is more than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. So, it is also an obtuse angle. In clock C, the angle shown is less than 90 degree. So, it is an acute angle. In clock D, it is 90 degrees. That is L shaped. So, it is a right angle. In clock E, the angle formed is again more than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. So, it is also an obtuse angle. Making a degree clock. This is an interesting activity. You can do it at home by yourself. Cut a circle out of a paper. Fold it into half. Now, fold once more into a quarter. Fold it one last time. Open the paper. You will see these lines as shown in diagram E. Now, make the degrees as shown in the picture. When you fold this circle into half, the measure will be 180 degrees. Now, again when you fold it into a quarter, the measure will be 90 degrees. Finally, you fold the paper for the last time, the measure will be 45 degrees. So, we can say half of 90 degrees is 45 degrees. One third of the right angle is 30 degrees and two times the right angle is 180 degrees. From this degree clock, you can clearly make out all the measures of an angle. An acute angle which is less than 90 degrees. Right angle is exactly 90 degrees. Obtuse angle is more than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. And finally, straight angle which is exactly 180 degrees. Angles with yoga. You can see two yoga poses marked with four angles. Identify the angles marked 1, 2, 3 and 4. Angle 1 is a right angle. Angle 2 is an acute angle. The angle is less than 90 degrees. Angle 3 is an obtuse angle. That is, the angle is more than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. And angle 4 is again an acute angle which is less than 90 degrees. Protractor. There is a D in your geometry box. It is called a protractor. Protractor is used to measure an angle. You can see how a protractor looks like. You can see a baseline, an origin and the degrees marked clockwise and anticlockwise. Now, how to measure an angle using a protractor? Place the origin of the protractor on the vertex of the angle. You know now what is a vertex. It is the joining point of two rays. A protractor has two sets of numbers. One 
from 0 to 180 and the other from 180 to 0. Place the protractor as shown in the figure. That is, the origin of the protractor should be at the vertex of the angle. How will you see what measure is your angle? Now, first think whether the angle given is bigger than 90 or smaller than 90. If the number is bigger than 90, then go for the number more than 90. And if it is smaller, then go for the number less than 90. In the figure, you can see both acute and obtuse angles marked. In this session, you have learned triangles are used in building towers and bridges so as to make them very strong. You also learned the classification of angles according to their measures. They are acute angle, right angle, obtuse angle and straight angle. Finally, you learned about a protractor, an instrument which is used to measure an angle and how to use a protractor to measure an angle. Children, this was the last session of the chapter Shapes and Angles. I am sure you have understood what is a polygon, a ray, an angle, classification of angle according to their measures and also how to use a protractor to measure an angle. Draw a few angles in your notebook and try to measure them using a protractor. With practice, you will learn to measure the angles. Thank you.